Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another video in the Infrastructure as Code on AWS with Terraform playlist, where we'll provision a simple VPC from a CloudFormation template by creating the stack using Terraform. If you're new to Terraform, I recommend starting with the videos at the beginning of this playlist to build a foundation before following along here, as I won't be going in depth into the Terraform code. Also, some prior exposure to CloudFormation templates will be helpful. I'll put a link to a video on creating a VPC with CloudFormation in the description below in case you're interested. Now, with that out of the way, let's start building. Jumping into the six Terraform and CloudFormation folder in my GitHub repo project, and then opening the Terraform folder and the main TF file, we see the main Terraform block, with a required version in the 1.5 range. I've also specified a required provider of HashiCorp AWS, and in the provider's TF file, I've specified a region of US East 1. Back in the main TF, we see I have a backend S3 block for remote state locking, which is currently commented out and we'll revisit shortly. Further down, I have a module for TF state, whose source property is the TF state folder in the modules folder and the bucket name and table name properties have values provided from variables in the local TF file, which we see here. Now jumping into the modules folder and the TF state folder and opening the TF state file, we see resources for an AWS S3 bucket with bucket versioning and server side encryption as well as an AWS DynamoDB table, which supports remote state locking. Now, if we jump into a terminal in the TF folder, I'll issue a Terraform format, passing it the recursive flag. And then run a Terraform init. Now with the AWS provider downloaded and the TF state module initialized, I'll run the Terraform validate. Then a Terraform plan. And here we see the plan is to add four resources, which consist of the DynamoDB table the S3 bucket with server-side encryption and bucket versioning. Now, before I go ahead and apply the plan, let's jump into the AWS console. And in S3, we see I currently have no buckets. And in DynamoDB, I currently have no tables. So let's jump back into the terminal. and run the Terraform apply, passing it the auto approve flag. Now with the plan complete, if we jump back over to AWS and in S3, we see our bucket and in DynamoDB, we see our table. Now back in the main TF, I'll uncomment the back end block save the file, jump back into the terminal, and run a Terraform init, and say yes to migrate the pre-existing local state to the remote state. And that was successful. Now I'll scroll down in the main TF, and uncomment the module for the CloudFormation bucket which will be used to hold the CloudFormation template. Here we see the value for the source property is the CFT bucket folder in the modules folder, and its bucket name property comes from a CFT bucket name variable. So if we jump into the variables file, we see a variable for CFT bucket name. And if we jump into the Terraform TFVars file, we see its value of CC demo CFT bucket. Now, in the modules folder, let's open the CFT bucket folder and a CFT bucket Terraform file. 
Here we see this is an AWS S3 bucket resource with the bucket variable being populated from the bucket name. And if we open this variables TF file, we see the bucket name variable and it has an outputs file which exposes the bucket name and bucket endpoint. So with these files modified and saved, let's jump into the terminal. Do a Terraform format and a Terraform init to initialize the new module. Now I'll run a Terraform validate and a Terraform plan. We see the plan is to add one module, which is the AWS S3 bucket. So I'll go ahead and apply the plan. And with the plan complete, we jump into the S3 console. We see our new bucket which currently has no objects. So let's jump back over to VS Code and uncomment the module for the CFT template, which is an S3 object, which will hold the actual CloudFormation template. This source property points to the CFT template folder in the modules folder, and the bucket name property is populated from the module named CFT buckets, CFT bucket name output. The template key and the template source have values provided from the variables file. So let's jump into the variables TF and uncomment these variables. And if we jump into the Terraform TF vars file, we'll uncomment the values. Now here we see the CFT template name has a value of template.yaml file and the template location points to going back one directory into the CFT folder and then the template YAML file, which if we jump into the CFT folder real quick, we'll see the template YAML file, which is our CloudFormation template, which we'll revisit shortly. Now going into the modules folder and the CFT template folder, we'll open the CFT template file, which is an AWS S3 object with bucket, key, and source properties populated from variables. So if we open the variables TF file, we see the variable declarations and in the outputs, we see a CFT template output, which is equal to the S3 objects key. Now, if we jump back into the terminal, and do a Terraform init to initialize the module. Then a Terraform plan. We see the plan is to add one resource, which is an AWS S3 object. Now I'll go ahead and apply the plan. And with the apply complete, if we jump back into the S3 console and refresh our bucket, we see the template YAML file has been uploaded. Now let's jump back into VS Code. And before we uncomment the CF stack, let's jump into CFT folder and open the template YAML file again. Here, as mentioned before, this is our CloudFormation template, which will be used to create a simple VPC. It has a metadata section of an AWS CloudFormation interface and a single parameter group for the VPC configuration, which holds the parameters for the VPC name and the CIDR block. The parameters block has the VPC name, which is of type string and a default value of an empty string. And the CIDR is also a string and has an empty string as a default value as well. 
there's a rules block which validates the required parameters and has two assertions. The first is to assert that the VPC name is not an empty string, and the second asserts that the CIDR range is not an empty string. The resources section has a single resource named ccvpc, which is type AWS EC2 VPC. The properties has a CIDR block, which references the CIDR parameter above, and a tags property, which has a key of name, and its value is a reference to the VPC name. There's an output section for the ccvpc, which exports the stack name and has a value reference to the ccvpc. Now, if we jump into the AWS CloudFormation console and create stack with new resources and upload a template file and select a template YAML file, open and click next. Here we see parameters for the stack name, the VPC name, and the CIDR block. Now, instead of provisioning the stack here, I'm going to cancel, jump into a terminal, change directory into the CFT folder, and run an AWS CloudFormation validate template command, passing it to template body, which points to the template YAML file. And we see this is valid with the parameter values specified here. Now, I'll cancel out of this, jump back into VS Code, and open the params folder and a params JSON file. And here we see the parameter key of VPC name with the value of ccvpc and the CIDR with its CIDR block range. Now, I just want to note that when using a parameters JSON file, for every parameter in your CloudFormation template that you want to use a different value than what's provided as the default value, you should have a key value pair for that parameter in the params JSON file. Now, jump back over to the terminal and execute an AWS CloudFormation create stack command, giving it a stack name of ccvpc, specifying the template body of the template YAML file, and setting a parameters value equal to the parameters JSON file in the params folder. And here we see our stack ID. Now I'll run an AWS CloudFormation describe stacks command passing it the stack name of ccvpc and grepping the stack status. And we see the status is complete. So let's jump over to CloudFormation. And here we see our ccvpc stack in create complete status. And if we look at the resources, we see the ccvpc. And if we launch into the VPC console, we see the ccvpc with a CIDR range of 10.0.0.0 16. Now, let's jump back into the terminal. Here, I'll execute a CloudFormation list stack resources, passing the stack name, and we see the VPC resource. And finally, I'll issue a CloudFormation delete stack command. And if we jump back into CloudFormation, we see our stack is gone. And if we jump into the VPC console, we see the VPC is gone, with only the default VPC remaining. So let's jump back over to VS Code, close the params JSON file and the template YAML, and in the main TF, I'll uncomment the CloudFormation stack module. Here we see the source points to the CFT stack folder in the modules folder. The stack name property will be provided from a variable, as will the VPC name and VPC CIDR. So let's jump in the variables TF, uncomment the variables, jump into the TFRs file and uncomment these values. Here we have a value for the CFT stack name, as well as the VPC name and VPC CIDR, which are parameters in the CloudFormation template. The template URL property will be the URL to the CloudFormation template in the bucket. And to build this, we concatenate the CFT bucket endpoint output from the CFT bucket module with the CFT template key output from the CFT template module. Now, jumping into the modules folder and the CFT stack folder and opening the CFT stack file, we see this is an AWS CloudFormation stack resource. It has a name property equal to the stack name variable and the template URL is equal to the template URL variable. 
So if we jump into variables, we see the declarations. Now jumping back into the CFD stack, we see a parameters property, which contains the VPC name and CIDR block parameters in the CloudFormation template, which are populated from the variables. Now, I just wanna mention here that for every parameter that you have in your CloudFormation template, you should have a corresponding parameter key value pair entry in your Terraform module. And of course, the corresponding variable declaration and value. Now, let's jump back to a terminal. And in the Terraform folder, we'll run a Terraform init to initialize the new module. A Terraform validate. and a Terraform plan. And the plan is to add one resource, which is the AWS CloudFormation stack. And before we apply this, let's just jump back into the CloudFormation console again. And the only stack we have created is for our current environment, but not our VPC. And if we jump back into the VPC, just to double check again, the only VPC is the default VPC. So let's jump back into the terminal. And apply the plan. And here we see it's creating the CloudFormation stack. And in the AWS CloudFormation console, we see the stack in create complete status. So if we jump to the stack, then to the resources, we see the VPC was created and if we jump to the VPC console, refresh, we see our VPC. So that concludes this video on provisioning a CloudFormation stack using Terraform. If you found it helpful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.